The UF2018 indicator is a combination of a lot of really weird things. Uh, for starters, it looks terrible at first glance. And it's not really an indicator I would recommend a beginner use. This is something that is better placed in the hands of a more advanced trader. And then with the right amount of tweaking, you can actually make it into something really good, but only on certain instruments. And sometimes those results can be deceiving. But it is still worthy enough of being shown on the indicator profile series. Again, it's a very strange combination of things. And I just didn't have a picture for that. So here is an obscure one for you. It's the UF, yes, lowercase letters, 2018. Um, it was an indicator that was developed uh, well before 2018, just to add to the confusion. Uh, now, before we start, a couple notes. Last week, if you were not aware, because we want to make everybody aware, we showed a repainting indicator, the Alaskan Pip Assassin. Now, we did not show a repainter on purpose. We didn't know, and you guys in the comments section were very quick to pick up on it. And I made this very clear in the description. I said it on Twitter. Now, a lot of people didn't seem to know this because they were in the comments section saying, hey, you know, where can I find this on MT5 and, and TradingView and stuff like that? They were enthusiastic. Uh, don't be enthusiastic about a repainting indicator. You do not want it. So for those of you who might have missed that last week, please know it now. And also know, uh, we don't really know if there's an MT5 or a TradingView version out there. Um, you're just going to have to run a simple search for something like that. Um, we stick with the MT4 because that's what the strategy tester uses. And I'm sure your searching skills are no better or worse than anybody else's. So just uh, take the name of this thing, run a search, and see if you can find it. Um, but because last week was a repainter, and we're doing these things every two weeks now, we are giving you a bonus episode this week to replace the indicator last week. And then a week from now, we will have another indicator profile series video as we get back on schedule. So now that that's out of the way, let's move forward. So if you're brand new, uh, thank you for sitting through all that. But the rest of this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense either. Please enjoy the video anyway. And then when you're done, go to nononsensevorex.com and read that first page and then watch that first video. But for the rest of us, let's move on to the specs. So the UF 2018 indicator was actually created in 2012. And we don't know by who. Sometimes these people want to attach their name to the indicators they create. Sometimes they want to stay anonymous, and this was the case here. Uh, this is going to be a simple confirmation indicator, uh, very simple with the histogram, too. It just changes colors, and when it does, you know to make a move. Um, now, as far as an exit indicator goes, I'm going to lean towards no on this myself. I think once you see it, you might agree with me. But if I had to place some kind of judgment on it, I would just say, yeah, probably not. So let's take a look at it. Um, now, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is pretty bad. Um, not to where it's getting you into a lot of trouble, but let's take a look here. Um, so what you're going to see is as soon as it changes color from blue to red, that's going to be a short. Red to blue, that's going to be a long. So it got you into this short about here, which I guess is fine. But then it just ignores all of this and doesn't get you in the, to this long until like here, which is really not where you want to be. And it does get you into this short and just kind of kept you in it, which I guess is nice. But as I've said before on here, one of the biggest takeaway I have learned from doing this indicator profile series is finding so many indicators that I would have seen like this one, for example, taking a look at the example that was given to me and said, there's no way this thing is going to be good. The example itself is trash, um, but that was the wrong way to think. I would have passed up on a lot of really great indicators that way. So you're going to see in the blog post, um, all Dan did, because there's only one setting you really have to worry about, and he goes over that in the blog, but he just throws a random number into that setting, and you can see there's already an improvement. It's not a great improvement, but at least here it would have gotten you in earlier. Here it would have gotten you in right about the same. But as an addition, you see these false signals. Now, I quizzed Dan on this. I'm like, oh, what's up with all these false signals? That's not better. He's like, well, no. But because a lot of them are close together like this, there is an increased chance that the rest of your algorithm would have eliminated a number of these, um, which is fair. 
And he said, hey, look, I just threw a random number in there. You know, we didn't even go through all the tweaking yet. So it just goes to show that if something looks really bad on the surface, don't just completely give up on it. So that being said, let's go ahead and check on the testing. Now, before we do, just know that you guys need to test these yourself as well. Like we said before, the work is just starting with these things. How it performs in your system means everything. Now, also to reiterate what you're going to get in the description down below is you're going to get a link to my automation blog that shows you how to test these yourself through the MT4 strategy tester. Um, I have an embedded video from Dan on that blog post. And I also have a guy on there that for a fee will change an MT4 indicator into a trading view indicator. Like I said, it's not free, but that service is available. Uh, you will, as always, get the blog for this particular indicator that goes in to the settings that you need to be aware of, uh, the tweaks that we use on these tests and really anything else you ever wanted to know about this thing and then a place to go download it. So without further ado, let's get into the tests onto the Euro dollar. Now, this is right around 8% ROI on the daily. Um, we have certainly shown indicators on here that have performed better than that, but this is not a bad starting point. It's got a good solid win loss ratio, a good healthy amount of trades as well to start out with. Keep in mind that number is going to go down when you start adding pieces onto the algorithm because you're eliminating losing trades. But this is something I think you can work with. Uh, not so much on the four hour, but on the daily, I think that is quite solid. Uh, what is not quite solid and what is all over the place is gold. Um, sorry, gold traders, we have nothing for you at all on the daily. Couldn't even get the tweaks to get ourselves over uh, the zero mark. But I wanna draw your attention to down here on the four hour. And we're gonna talk for a minute here. So. A good ROI, a ton of trades, really nice win-loss ratio. What do we do with this information? Okay, so I don't know if you've ever tried to trade gold on the four hour, I have, and I really didn't like it, um, but you're gonna run into some pockets and some times of the day where the spread just gets absolutely insane. And I don't think the MT4 strategy tester really accounts for that. I don't know this for sure, Dan's the expert on the tester, but that would eat into this number a bit. Um, but especially if you're automating, that's a really good win-loss ratio, despite all those trades. Like that's really good. Um, I want to, what I want to do is go back to last week's episode with the repainter. There was a situation on the Euro USD where the win-loss ratio was 90%. And some people in the comments were saying, hey, you know, that didn't trigger alarm bells for you, VP, that it was 90% win-loss ratio. My answer to that is no, it didn't because that 90% was only on 10 trades. It was nine out of 10. So what is more impressive to you? And I think you're gonna know the answer by the way I'm setting up this question. Something that hits nine out of 10 or something that hits 60 out of 100? Because the win-loss ratios are gonna be pretty far off. But let me tell you, the 60 out of 100 is more of what you're looking for. So to correlate this um, in sports betting, there's something called a Z score, the letter Z or Z dash score. And it is assigned to professional handicappers that sell their picks. It's a really good metric because somebody who comes out hot out of the gate and hits nine out of their first 10, they're definitely going to let you know about that because it is going to give you the illusion that they are like this all the time. And that is just the win loss ratio you can expect going forward. But that's where the Z-score comes in. If somebody else has a documented record of winning 60 out of their last 100, they're going to get a much higher score than the guy who hit 9 out of 10. Because it is far more reasonable to expect that the guy with the bigger sample size, even with the lower win-loss ratio, is a better bet than the other guy who hit 9 out of 10. You know, hitting 9 out of 10 is nice, but it's not super impressive. You know, I've done it a few times. I'm sure some of you out there have too. But it's a false expectation going forward. So now how does it tie into this? With this sample size, that's pretty darn good. And even though I think this score is going to go down with those spreads, if you are somebody with an automated system who trades gold, this might be something to test out because this right here, to me, with my sports betting background and my testing background is something I would be interested in if I had an automated system. If I was a discretionary trader, I would not want to be around for all that. 
Uh, but for the four of you watching this video that hit those requirements I just described, take a look at it. And for the rest of you, be a bit skeptical of really good win-loss ratios with very small sample sizes. They are impressive on the surface, uh, but keep your expectations tempered. So that's your takeaway for this episode. Let's move on to the S&P. Now, again, not bad. This isn't the highest ROI we've ever shown on here, but the average return of the S&P 500 is about 11%. This number is going to go up as you add components onto it. Now, going forward, pretty good chance the S&P is, is going to underperform tremendously this year, and in my opinion, probably for the next couple years as well. Now, as traders, we have the luxury of going long or going short to where a lot of people in the trad financial world don't. So if you were to get a 10%, 11% ROI on the S&P this year, or probably the next couple years afterwards, that's going to look really good because most people are going to be in negative territory. You know, so that's just something to consider going forward. You don't need 20, 30% returns on the S&P to show some really nice results. And I know there's a lot of you indices traders out there that are trading to show a potential employer or a potential whale with a lot of money. So please don't balk at these ROIs, especially with those win-loss ratios, especially with that sample size. This, is, this could be something worth pursuing. That's all I'm saying. Now on to Bitcoin. I'm telling you, these results are all over the place. Great ROI on the daily, really great win-loss ratios, but a lot smaller on the trades. You know, take all of these factors into consideration. But the, at the end of the day, I thought this was a really great indicator to bring to you because it's just so all over the place. But I think in the hands of an experienced trader, there could be some real value to be extracted here. So there's a lot more where this came from. Please subscribe, hit the bell. We got so much going on right now. Did you know that we have a trading psychology podcast that is exclusive to YouTube right now? In a few weeks, we'll have it up on other podcast players, but this is the only place you can see it. We also have the 10 Minute Contrarian podcast, which is an investing podcast on Saturdays. These indicator profile series videos will continue on. And I want you there for all of it. So subscribe, hit the bell, put in the work. Thanks for watching and go get it.